Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share a ruler tutorial. I'm going to talk about the Simple Folded Corners Ruler and the Mini Simple Folded Corners Ruler, and show you a little bit about how I use them both. Now, I did previously do a video on this, but I only actually showed one aspect of using the ruler when I did that first video. So I've had some emails and some requests and some comments, and I want to, you know, do an update on that method and also share a few other ways that you can rule, use these really versatile rulers. Okay, so I'm going to, as I mentioned, talk about both of these rulers today. And I, I use them both. I probably use the mini version four to one as much as I use the bigger version, but I do do a lot of blocks quilts with smaller blocks. So the smaller version goes up to four and a half inches and the larger version goes up to eight and a half inches. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. Okay, if you've read any of my blog posts on blocks, I often suggest this ruler. And so I'm gonna show you a few different ways that I use it. For one thing, whenever you have a folded corner unit on a block where you have been told to, you know, place a square on a square, draw a line, so, and then trim. This is a wonderful, wonderful method because you actually do the trimming right in the beginning. So for example, if the pattern tells you to put these two squares right sides together and draw a line and sew a quarter of an inch away from the line, we can we don't have to draw on the line and we don't have to trim after we've sewn. We will simply align the ruler. You're going to align one of the straight lines with the edge of the fabric that's on top and another one of the lines with the edge of the fabric on the bottom. And you're gonna see that this diagonal line is actually our seam line and that there is a quarter of an inch there, and that's actually gonna be our seam allowance. So we're going to trim it first, and we're gonna get rid of the background and the triangle right away. Now, when you're sewing with bigger pieces, for example, when I'm using this ruler with bigger blocks, these pieces are often so big that I can actually make a half score triangle with them. Now I'm just gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam, and then I'm going to come back and press it, and it will be ready to go. And actually, I've already done that on this side, and that's what you're left with. So it is so much easier than grabbing a pencil, drawing the line, sewing, Tr pressing, trimming, all of that is done super easily. So for example, when you're making a square and a square block, this is a great way to do it. And what I always do is I always do the two opposite corners first, and then I add the third one, and then I actually add my fourth one, and I'm actually gonna take this over to the machine this time and sew it and let you see how this unit finishes up. Okay, so once again, that's done. That can go away if it's small, if it's big, I add it to my pile of, of half square triangles to be sewn. I'm gonna go sew this, and I'm actually gonna go sew this one and come back and show you. Okay, so here's my completed square and a square unit. Here's the one that I just sampled for you that I already had the first one done and showed you the second one. And you can see that we've got our quarter inch seam allowance so that when this gets sewn into a block, there aren't gonna be any points cut off. It's just a fantastic way to make this unit with, with eliminating some of the steps. Okay, another way I use this ruler is to make flying geese units. And again, it's the same exact method. So I have my, this is a, for a two and a half inch by four and a half inch or two by four finished flying geese. I've got my two and a half inch by four and a half inch background, my two and a half inch by two and a half inch square. And I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm gonna go sew this 
and actually what I will end up with is the first half of my flying goose unit complete. And I'm actually going to do this again so that you can see the finished flying geese unit. So this time I will put it on the other side and I'm going to do the same exact thing. And I'm going to go sew this and bring this back and show you the finished flying geese. Okay, and so here's our finished flying geese unit. And so again, two of the main ways that I use this ruler are whenever I'm doing a square and a square and flying geese. Now, a lot of you who have watched a lot of the videos know that I really do love the creative grids of ultimate flying geese tool. And I also love my block locks for flying geese. But when I tend to use this a lot for flying geese is when it is a size that is not included on any of those rulers or when it's a larger flying geese unit. For example, a four and a half inch by eight and a half flying geese that I don't have a block lock for, I will go ahead and use the rulers. So I, I just can't say enough about these rulers. I wanna show you something else that I use them for. Okay, now let me show you another favorite way that I like to use this ruler. A lot of you know that I like to make my half square triangles a little bit larger than they need to be and trim them down to the exact size needed for the pattern before I use them. And so you can use actually both of these rulers to do that as well. Um, it doesn't really matter which one. You can trim larger pieces with the larger ruler, of course. But I have these flying geese units that were left over from another project or, or half square triangle units that were part of another project. And, but they haven't yet been trimmed down. So what you do is you find your seam line where you've sewn and you're gonna line up the diagonal line with that seam line. So if I put my two inch line, just for example, on here, there's a line right there, it has two, 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 so I can make sure that it's lined up all the way and I trim this. This is going to give me a two and a half inch half square triangle, which will finish at two inches. So this is the finished size. And I've got one that I actually pressed already, just to show you, I did a bigger one. And I pressed it, and you can actually, when you press them after you've trimmed, you can press the seams open or to the dark, whatever you want. And then all you need to do is trim off your little dog ears. And this is ready to use. So this is another fantastic use of these rulers because they actually have these lines at every half inch going across. So you can you know, whether you need half inch, one, all the way up, and then with the bigger ruler, you can get all the way up to trimming in a six inch half square triangle here. So that's a third way that I love to use these rulers. I did get a question, somebody emailed, and she, uh, she felt like these rulers were very slippery. And I wanted to offer a solution because I love this ruler so much that if you're having a slippage issue, there is this product, it's the Steady Betty, Betty Bits. And what these are, are little tiny dots that you can apply to your ruler. They're just like a little foam and they have a little sticky, it's perforated. So you can pop it out. You might need to trim it Okay, but you just remove the paper and there's a little bit of a sticky thing there. And when you put it on your ruler, make sure that it's not covering one of these lines. And you can put two, the, the pattern instructions show you placing maybe five on a larger square ruler. But I think for this ruler, I'm just gonna put two on. Let me see if I can 
I'm just going to cut it from the beginning. I, I usually don't have an issue with slipping, but I am going to put it on and see. So now I've got it to where, and you, I probably could even put one more right there, but it's, it's going to grip it a little bit more and make it a little bit easier for you if you do have a problem with your ruler sliding. And what the package says is that this will compress over time, but it actually will continue to grip your ruler. So just a thought if you are having any issues with this ruler or any other ruler that you like to use slipping. But I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you will find these useful, these rulers as useful as I do. I really do love the simple folded corners and the mini simple folded corners rulers. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial on the Simple Folded Corners Ruler and the Mini Simple Folded Corners Ruler. Both of these rulers are designed by Doug Lico, who is a pattern designer and author, and he also is a Moda sales rep. So Doug has and I have known each other for several years in this industry, and he knows that I absolutely love this ruler. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.